Hello everyone and welcome to Crafty Garden. This is my channel about knitting, spinning, sewing, all of the crafty things. Uh, today I convinced um, my cat Tux to be my co-host and uh, he's happy, cozy, hanging out with me here. So, oh wait, I might have spoke too soon. Hold on. I think we're just getting comfortable. <laughs> Oh gosh. Okay, so I have a lot to talk about today and uh, I'm feeling like a little bit thrown off because I was going to podcast and then I stopped in the middle of what I was doing to um, to go send out a special uh, order. Somebody bought um, some fiber from me. So I like um, ran, stopped what I was doing and ran straight out to the post office. Um, and um, And yeah, that's just because this person has been really supportive of me and my channel and, uh, and my new Etsy shop. So, um, I wanted to make sure I got that, um, her purchase out to her. So <laughs> I actually have a little video that I'm going to insert, um, when it's, uh, later when it's relevant. So I have a little agenda, um, of things that I want to get to. So, um, I have some current events that I want to talk about, some things that happened, um, that I'm going to mention, um, just, yeah, and uh, then I have um, a little bit of sewing to talk about, and then I'm going to talk about knitting, um, spinning, and then at the end I'm going to show what I have in my Etsy shop. So, um, so yeah, current events. Um, there's so much going on right now. Rhinebeck is happening this weekend, <laughs> and um, I'm going. Like, I, I'm pretty sure that I'm going. I'm a little bit nervous about it because it's my first time and, uh, and, and I don't have a sweater finished and I want to try and finish. I'm going to talk about that knitting. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it's just, it's a huge, huge event. There's going to be so many people there, so many people that I watch, um, knitting podcasters and, um, and just, oh, you know, um, it's, it's a big deal. So, um, I'm really excited about it, but I'm also really nervous. <laughs> so, uh, I just wanted to say that I, I should be there, um, Saturday and hopefully wearing a sweater that I made. <laughs> um, and, uh, and yeah, I look forward to it. Um, cross my fingers that everything goes well and yeah. So, okay. Um, so current events, so the big thing that happened recently, um, my husband and I just celebrated four years of marriage and to, uh, to celebrate that we went, we decided to take a short trip to Montreal and it was my first time, uh, visiting Canada and, um, it was my first time officially leaving the country. Um, I've been to Puerto Rico, but that's a U.S. territory and that was actually for our honeymoon. So, um, so yeah. Um, so it was my first time leaving the country. Um, and yeah, we went to Montreal and we walked around old Montreal and saw the port. Um, and, um, and, uh, yeah, we just, um, yeah, it was a short trip. We didn't, we didn't get a lot done. We got to go to the biodome. Um, yeah, while I'm thinking about it, I think what I'm going to do, I know I normally have photos at the beginning. But I have so many photos and videos that I took that I'll be inserting them at the end of the video. So um, I think if you want to stay tuned um, for the whole thing <laughs> or skip ahead, uh, I'll probably have um, some little videos and things uh, inserted at the end from um, from our trip and like the biodome and things like that. Um, so yeah, the one thing that I really want to talk about from our trip was... Um, the store that I went to, and um, and if you're a knitter, uh, then you're probably maybe you can guess where I went. And um, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie, this is probably like my favorite place that we went to, which is kind of awful. But <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, what can you do? Um, it's uh, you guys understand. So um, so we went to a spa Strico, which is a like sort of famous yarn store um, in Montreal. And uh, we showed up really late. Um, you know, I think we there wasn't even an hour before the store closed. And so I didn't um, get to spend too much time there. I mean, 
45 minutes. So it's not a lot. <laughs> um, and my, um, my sweet husband, he's, I think he's just used to it. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, so I got some things from, um, Espostrico, and I'm super excited, uh, and I'm going to show you those things. Um, yeah, I guess I can just show you now. So hold on. Wait, I had to, okay, because I went and dropped that order off, I ran the town, and I got, um, a latte. It's just a, um, a plain latte, nothing added. So then I don't have to feel guilty about like artificial sweeteners and things, which I don't drink. <laughs> um, okay, so let's just jump straight into it. I'm just going to show you my um, Espostrico haul. So, <laughs> so I have this bag, and okay, I'll start with the, uh, I'm going to like go, I don't know, I don't know, everything's exciting. This is the, this is the only thing that's not super exciting. Um, because I've already bought, I think I bought 11 of these, um, from Nido, which was a, a store in Burlington, Vermont. I've talked about it, um, before and they just closed down. I didn't get to go see them for their closing sale. I'm not going to harp on it. It's sad. Anyways, I thought I should get another one of these and Espostrico had, um, this exact color that I needed and it's the same exact dye lot. Um, so I thought just while I was there, I would pick up another one because I know that when I bought the amount that I needed, I was erring on the, um, well, I was, I should have bought another one. Let's just put it that way. So I bought this one just to make sure that I have enough and I don't have to like scramble to order another one later. So that's for my grandpa cardigan. It's the Hohe Locatelli grandpa cardigan, and I didn't work on it at all, so I won't be showing it. But you can go check out my past videos um, <laughs> if you want to see that. Um, so okay, so so I had to get some things that were that were. Um, representative of Canada, right? Like local things, um, indie dyers from the area, um, things like that. So, um, you know, they had, they have a lot of hedgehog fibers and it was tempting. Um, there was mohair hedgehog fibers. Um, it, you know, it's just, there was so much there. It was all really pretty, but I decided that cause I had some mohair like in my crook of my arm and I carried it around for about, a, you know, five minutes. And I was like, no, no, <laughs> you really should get some like Canadian things. And plus I already have, um, some hedgehog fibers, um, yarn and stuff from my, um, find your fate, which I'm also not going to be talking about. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't also didn't make any progress on that. Spoiler alert. I didn't knit a whole lot. Okay. I knit on one thing. Like a lot on one thing. We'll we'll get to it later. Okay, so I've got some Canadian things. So I got um, Tannis Fiber Arts, and this is her red label. It's MCN Merino Cashmere Nylon, and this is I think the colorway Tartan. And I really really loved this one. Um, it has some silk in there, so uh, I think that's what gives it this really beautiful shine and I just love these colors um, so basically I uh, I bought this just because it's Tannis Fiber Arts I've never had any of her yarn before um, and like I said I wanted to buy things that were local Canadian you know indie dyer kind of things so um, so yeah Tannis Fiber Arts was up, up, up there on the list um, I looked at her like regular sock yarn and um, I just didn't see anything that really spoke to me. Um, but when I saw this, I was like, okay, <laughs> this is it. You're coming home with me. <laughs> um, and it's a single, a singles yarn. So it's probably going to be a shawl. Um, you know, obviously it's, it's, it needs to be something that, um, it's not going to get a ton of wear. Um, because it's a singles, it's not going to be as durable. So 
Yeah, it will likely become a shawl at some point. Um, but I think it's super gorgeous and, uh, and definitely fall colors. Um, I love it. So yeah, no official plans yet, but yay! <laughs> this is my first Tannis Fiber Arts uh, yarn. Okay, so that's the uh, second item. And okay, so the third thing I got was, um, so another podcaster, uh, you might know her as Scrumptious Pearl, <laughs> dyes these self-striping um, sock, sock yarn. So uh, this is her little label with the adorable puppy dog. <laughs> and uh, this color is Birds of a Feather. And I loved the colors. I really like agonized probably for 10 minutes or more over which color to choose. And, um, and they had a, a spa strico color and I thought about it because it would be sort of like a, um, so like a, what do you call it? A souvenir kind of yarn project. Um, but I just, I decided that, uh, these colors were calling to me and I guess I'm not over the bright, happy colors yet. Like I'm moving into fall colors, but I think I'm just in general, I love bright, happy colors. So I think, yeah, I will love these socks. They're going to be awesome. Super happy socks. <laughs> so that was, yeah, that's Scrumptious Pearl. And she has a podcast, if you didn't already know. Um, so yay, those will eventually be socks. <laughs> All right, so uh, I have two more things to show you. So the next thing is uh, some fiber from Sweet Georgia Yarns. Uh, or is it just Sweet Georgia? But uh, so Sweet Georgia is uh, is a, um, a, a yarn and fiber dyeing company, and they're based in Canada. And um, so this actually was on clearance for um, thirty percent off. Oh, it's got wait, hold on. It was thirty percent off, and there was a bunch of these Sweet Georgia uh, fibers all for 30% off. And um, this one, if I can get the tag. Oh, it's on it. <laughs> this one is BFL and Silk, and it's called Midnight Garden. And yet, 25% Tussa Silk, 75% Blue Face Luster. So it's purple and green and blue. Um, I think it's kind of springy, but I really liked the colors. Um, and I, you know, since it was such a good discount, I thought, you know, go for the silk, right? Because I could have gotten, they had just BFL, a couple of braids of, you know, like less expensive BFL, but it was 30% off. And plus I'm already getting kind of like a good deal on everything because the US dollar um, is worth more than the Canadian dollar right now. So I paid less than $20 for this and it's BFL and silk. Like I think if I, if originally, okay, this is $35 originally. I paid less than $20 for it, like less than $19 when you convert it. So yeah, I was like, I'm getting the silk. <laughs> so yay. That's my, um, my first Sweet Georgia yarn fiber, <laughs> my first Sweet Georgia anything. <laughs> and um, I actually have some little minis that are in my stash that um, that could go with this and I could like turn it into like a whole project and like have some hand spun and then some um, uh, hand dyed, um, like I have these little locally hand dyed minis I bought this past spring and I could put them together to make like a whole project. And they're like, they match these colors. Yeah. So, um, so yay, Sweet Georgia Yarns. Um, so yeah, and then, okay, one last thing. Uh, the last thing I got from Espostrico was one of their bags. <laughs> so, okay, this is um, a little enamel pin with their logo and I'll just open it up for you. So they, um, I saw on their podcast, like after I got back home, I checked their podcast out and I noticed that 
um, they showed off some denim ones. And when I was there, um, they must have sold out because all they had were these canvas ones, um, which I'm fine with anyways, because um, I, I think it looks really clean and pretty. And um, the, so they all look the same with the exception of the zipper. So the zippers were different colors. I, I remember there was maybe a, a yellow um, and maybe another color. And then I think that I bought the last orange one. And yeah, I think if there was a hot pink, I probably would have bought the hot pink one. But I actually really like the orange. And plus it's perfect for fall right now anyways. So um, I really love this. It's a cute little boxy bag. It's got nice little details. So it has this. Um, little pool. It has this big circular ring on the zipper. And then it has this little handle so you can um, carry it around like this. And just kind of like open this up and let your knitting um, come through and work, you know, knit away. So yay! That's my new Esposprico bag. Um, and yeah, I'm still, I still need project bags. Like <laughs> I have my find your fate in this thing that was supposed to be a grocery store bag, <laughs> like a reusable grocery store bag I made years ago. That's not supposed to be for knitting. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't feel bad about this at all. Like I feel like I still need cute project bags and I don't even, I don't have like a French supply bag or anything. So yay. Um, I love the little enamel pin, and um, it has this nice little pocket, which I don't um, I don't really care for DPNs. I have some like uh, knit picks ones that are, I think are bamboo maybe, um, but I don't really use them. I um, I think I just like circulars better. Um, but it looks like if you were a uh, a DPN person, that that might be a good um, size pocket to put DPNs in. But of course you can put other things in there too like measuring tape and um, um, notions and like little stitch, uh, stitch markers and things like that can go in there. So yay! Yeah that is, um, yeah that's it for my uh, my Espostrico haul, and I'll have photos that I'll be inserting, I don't know, here, there, and everywhere. Um, yay! And so, yeah, maybe next time I'll have a project to show off in here. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to put this up now. All right. Hold on, I need some more caffeine. <laughs> All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is, um, okay, so I won a giveaway. So lots of exciting things have been happening. Um, I just, I, I know that I, I'm blessed and I'm lucky and um, I'm super grateful. I've just been, I've just been having like so many wonderful things happen to me. So many wonderful people start to come into my life um, and uh it, you know, through the podcast and, uh, and reaching out to, uh, other crafty people has just been, um, really, uh, joyful. So anyways, I won a, uh, I won a giveaway and, uh, it, it's from, um, a, an Etsy store called Random Fandom Bags. So it's not as cute as it was when she sent me cause I like, obviously I've played with it already. Um, but she sent me this little, um, like, giveaway goodie bag. And the prompt for the giveaway, it was on Instagram, and the prompt was, uh, what's your favorite kind of cake? Because it was her birthday. And um, the winning answer was, was mine, of course. And I had said um, pumpkin uh, cake because my wedding, at my wedding, we had, um, we actually had orange uh, on the inside. We had um, a pumpkin cake. So it was bright orange on the inside. Um, it just looked like, you know, uh, white frosting on the outside. And it had like a beautiful little um, glass blown uh, pumpkin that uh, a Vermont artisan made. 
and that was our wedding topper cake topper was a little glass blown pumpkin um I like pumpkins if you haven't noticed <laughs> Um, and, uh, and yeah, there might be some pumpkin themed yarn. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so I want her giveaway. And if you don't know, Random Fandom Bags makes these really awesome, adorable, um, tea bags. So they're little notions bags, um, that look like little tea, tea bags that you would put in your, you know, in your mug to make tea. Um, obviously. And, uh, and so she gave me a bunch of little extra goodies. So these little um, scissors, which are awesome. I don't have any of these, so this was nice to get. And um, I already put some of my own um, stitch markers and stuff in there. But um, yeah, I put um, this little bunny stitch marker that I made in there. She sent me this sweater progress keeper. Sorry. It's a little sweater on knitting needles. And then my little Mrs. Potts project keeper is in there. Um, the other ones, I most of the other ones I have are in use right now. And then she also sent me this um, lipstick thing. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> and I think I figured out what it is. So I think what you do is you put um, sewing needles or tapestry needles in here. And then you sort of wind it down and then you put this in your project bag. So <laughs> you put it in your project bag and then you have, you know, knitting needle, not knitting needles, knitting needles. You have um, tapestry needles or sewing needle at the ready. So I think that's what that is. So if, uh, if it's not, you could let me know, but I'm pretty sure that's, that has to be what it's used for, um, which is really nifty. I mean, it's pretty cool. And actually, the tapestry needles that I have are super sharp, so this is this is handy. Um, and then she sent me like um, some tea, obviously, because she sells little tea bags. So she sent me some tea. Yeah, and that was it for my giveaway. It has um, little balls of yarn on it. My cat is like snoring or something. I was worried about like, what is that noise? I think it's my cat. <laughs> He's um sleeping. <laughs> yeah, and then there's a little mini skein in there too. So um, yeah, I've actually, so my, uh, my real honest opinion, that is really adorable. I really love it and I can't wait to attach it. Oh. <gasps> It has this little thing. So look, wait. Hold on. No, go on. Oh, it attaches. <laughs> Oops, my scissors. Um, <laughs> you can attach it to your project bags. And she actually sells project bags too. Um, and I've checked, I've checked her out, her Etsy shop, but unfortunately every time she has, um, one of these bags that I want to buy and I go, they're sold out. So I think there was like a Harry Potter one. I was like, Ooh, and then it was sold out. But, so yay, I love it. Thank you so much if you're watching this. I don't know that you watch my podcast or even are aware that I have a podcast, but if you are and if you, you know, you do know, thank you. I really love it. Um. So yay! So okay. So that's that's my giveaway that I won. All right. So I'm just gonna keep looking at my notes to make sure that I don't forget things. Okay. So I think I'll just talk about sewing now. Um. So if you don't already know, the shirt that I'm wearing today, um, is a shirt that I made, and I just recently finished it. I made it for our trip to Montreal so that I could have a cute little outfit to wear. And I made um, a special video dedicated just to this blouse. And, uh, and I talked about making it and the pattern and different things. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can go check that video out. But I'm not going to get too much into it because I've already made a separate video for it. So yeah, go check that video out if you want. 
but I'll just quickly show that it is the Valletta Top from Blank Slate Patterns. It's a brand new pattern. And yeah, if you want to um, hear about my review and um, see like better video of the of the shirt and me being silly in my yard, then go check that out. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I think, oh, okay, no, that's not all. I'll just quickly mention these two. Um, so with that Blank Slate Patterns purchase, oops, um, you, you also get a free, um, you also get the Blanc Tea for free. Um, it automatically uh, is uh, downloaded with your PDF purchase. So when you buy it, you get the, the links for, um, to print it out. And this came with it. Like, I had no idea. And I was like, did I, like, secretly get something accidentally? No, it was intentional. They're, they're giving it out for free. So if you buy one of their patterns, you get this. Um, I don't know all of their patterns or what if it's just women's patterns because they have children's patterns and stuff but um so yeah I think what I'll do because this is going to be super easy super simple to sew up it should take me no time at all um maybe like after Rhinebeck and things calm down and I have a lot going on right now so I, there's just no way um but hopefully like maybe after Rhinebeck and stuff um I'll get some fabric some knit fabric to sew up for this and it looks like a super easy breezy comfortable basic tee and I could use another one of those he's like snoring <laughs> um, okay and then so because of um, you guys probably know about the hey sister yarn co and of course I watch them and love them who doesn't um, <laughs> and they also sew too which is awesome so um, What's her name? I think Tabby. Is it Tabby? She just made a short video on the um, uh, Hampton jean jacket pattern. And she mentioned that there is a, um, a discount code. Now, I don't know if it's still current. So um, if, you, if you're interested in sewing, maybe you should go um, like pause this video and go check out that if you're interested. Because there was... Um, it's like Hamptons for Fall or something um, coupon code, and I don't know if it's still current. But I saw that, and I decided um, that I would go ahead and buy this pattern. Now, I knew about this pattern prior to watching her video. When this pattern first came out, I heard about it, and they had a kit with, like, denim fabric, buttons, everything. And um, I was, like, this close to pulling the trigger on that. But when it first came out, I was swamped busy. I had no time for any sort of personal life. I was super, super busy coming home, passing out in the recliner because I was that tired. Um, I had no time, so I couldn't justify buying it at the time. But right now, um, okay, I'm super busy right now because of the Etsy store. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting like super busy. I'm super busy all the time, but, um, but I have time for it. <laughs> so I was like, um, Coupon code, I, yeah, I went ahead and pulled the trigger. But I don't see myself making this before I make the um, closet case files Kelly Anorak jacket because I already have fabric for that and I already have plans to make um, that jacket and that needs to come before this and I don't have fabric for this. But I just thought I'd mention it and maybe you're interested in the coupon code or sewing it. So I just thought I'd talk about it. Um, and oh my gosh, they, they like give you a book. <laughs> There's a lot here. Okay. So that's it for sewing. And, um, yeah, hopefully I'll have inserted some photos and things and you can go check out the other video where I talk about my new top and yeah, that's it for sewing. Okay. So knitting and I'm like trying to fly through this because I don't want this to be an hour and a half long video. So sorry if I seem like, all right, moving on. <laughs> um, I don't have a lot of knitting to talk about. Um, I primarily worked on one project and um, I'm just going to, okay, I'm gonna talk about my sweater first. So I showed this before and um, it is my So Faded sweater. And I'll pull it open. 
So this is my so faded sweater. It's nearly finished. Um, and, uh, and I decided that, um, because it's so close to being finished, it's the, um, you know, I have my grandpa card again, but it's not anywhere. It's, there's no way, there's no way, um, I could get it done for Ryan Beck. So, um, this has been needed. I've been needing to finish this for uh, quite some time. Like I think I started this in the spring. So like late spring, this is Peggy Jane fibers. It's 100% Peggy Jane fibers. Um, the top was a special colorway that she dyed for, um, must love yarn, which is a, um, a store in Shelburne, Vermont, really, really, really close to Burlington. Um, so Shelburne, Vermont, and that's, uh, it's must love yarn. So she did a special like wholesale, um, she died for them and um, all of this yarn I think is is either this color is for sure gone it was gone a long time ago um and uh, one of the the owners of the store Kelly hi Kelly I don't know that you watch this but hello um if you are um Kelly also used this in a uh faded sweater not the so not the so uh, not the uh so faded but uh, a different one um so yeah, this was uh, only available at uh, the store and it's gone now. Um, the next two colors were, um, I bought from Peggy Jane's, um, well, her name's Kelly, but her store is Peggy Jane Fibers on Etsy. And um, these two here are uh, Potent Petals. That's one of her colorways, Potent Petals. And uh, we've, we've chatted a little bit. She follows me on Instagram. And um, she told me that she loved this, um, the idea of the sweater so much that she wanted to make one like it. Um, I don't think she has, but. Um, and then this last color is um, a custom order that I asked her to make for me. So this is, these two are potent petals. And then this one, I asked her if she could to um, take the potent petals colorway and then add more purple and that's exactly what she did for me so um so yeah the, the last color was a custom color that she made for me it was a custom potent petals <laughs> so yeah i want this to be my rhinebeck sweater and maybe i'll go try it on for you because i could actually I mean, I only have one sleeve and it's not even finished, but, um, I could maybe go try it on for you in a second. But, um, I took it to, I took it with me for like car knitting, um, on our way to Montreal. And, um, I realized during the process that, um, one of the reasons why I probably didn't finish this sleeve is because, um, I need to I need to rip this out. I need to rip this purple color out and re-knit it. Um, number one, I think um, I should not increase uh, not increase. I should um, I decreased one too many times. Like it still fit it fits, but it, I think it would look better if I didn't do that one extra decrease round and. Also, I think when I switched to this color, I switched to um, these little circulars and it drastically changed the gauge. And I think that's why this sat languishing for so long. Like I ran into an issue, I didn't want to deal with it, so I didn't. Uh, and I think that's the real reason why this sweater was never finished. Um, and that happens to me sometimes. I run into an issue and I just don't want to deal with it, so I don't. <laughs> but it's no big deal. I'm just going to um, tear this, this color out. And uh, that sounds aggressive. <laughs> I'm going to pull this out and then, um, and then re knit it, and then it'll be perfectly fine and ready for Rhinebeck. I even started to like knit. Um, some of the ribbing when I was in denial in the car thinking like, oh, it's fine. <laughs> no, it's not. 
So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tear that out. I'm gonna re knit it. There's a bunch of geese flying by. Just like distracted. Um, I have this beautiful picture window right in front of me. And uh, gosh, the fall. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna do that and then finish the uh, finish the sleeve, which should take me no time at all, and then knit the other sleeve which hopefully won't take too long. And I think that's reasonable that I can get that done um, for Rhinebeck. And um, so yeah, hopefully I'll be uh, wearing it at Rhinebeck. And I guess since I'm on the subject, um, I don't know, um, you know, there's the podcaster meetup. Um, I think, you know, I'll probably go to it, but will I go as Crafty Garden um, or will I just go as Stephanie? Because, um, you know, I'm really, um, I don't, oh, I forgot so many things. I keep forgetting things. Um, this is, I should have, um, I should have wrote better show notes. Um, <laughs> I've, I have a lot of new subscribers, guys. Like, I keep, like, getting notifications that I've got new subscribers, and I'm just kind of, like, in awe of it, and, um, and then I just happened to look at my last video, and I think my mouth, my jaw dropped. Literally, when I saw the amount of views that my past video had, I was like, <laughs> because there were like 600 views, and uh, that was just insane. Because normally I get, you know, I don't know, 100 would be a lot of views for some of my other uh, episodes. Because uh, some of them, I think, have like 60-ish or something like that. Um so, uh, you know, some of my sewing, my past sewing videos, I have one that has like over a thousand views, but, but it's sewing. So it's a little, it's a different, uh, ballpark and it's been out for over a year. Or so, um, anyways, my point is, is that, wow, guys, like, thank you so much, um, for, uh, for all of you who have subscribed recently. And, um, and I have a feeling that many of you might have come from, um, So Perfect Pearls, and um, many of you might have come from um, Mandobug. So if you did, thank you. Um, a special thank you to both of them. Um, I love both of them and their channels. They're awesome. Awesome people. And, uh, and yeah, so, okay. Anyway, so all of that sidetrack. Um, so I, I just don't think that right now... Um, I don't want to like get a big head either and say like next year. No, I just, I, you know, I just don't think uh, anybody will recognize me or realize who I am. Um, I mean, maybe one or two of you will see this and, and you can come say hi to me if you see me, um, at Rhinebeck. But, um, but yeah, uh, I don't know that there's really any point in me going as like crafty garden and having like buttons and things to give out like other people do just because I don't have the, um, I don't think I have the, uh, uh I don't know. I don't want to say interest, but, um, I don't know. I think I'm just going to go as Stephanie and if you recognize me, um, and, and as crafty garden and you want to come up and say hi or even take photos. God forbid. Um, no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> um, I would love to do that. In fact, I'm probably going to try and get photos with a whole bunch of people. We'll see. We'll see. Cause I don't know. You feel bad. You feel bad for people too, because, um, you know, constantly like, I don't know. People just constantly wanting their attention. They can't like relax and just be themselves. Um, so I get that too. Uh, yeah. But, um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I'm, I'm planning on going. So, so yeah, I'm getting like, I don't know, excited and nervous and all of those things. Um, it's just, you know, I'm really fortunate that I live close enough to be able to drive there. Um, it's not like next door, you know, it's not like a 10 minute trip down the road, but it's reasonable for me to drive there and back home in a day. So, so yeah, um, so yeah, okay, so um, since um, since I'm going to be trying to finish this, and it might help like spur me along if I do this, so I think what I'll do is I'm going to go put the sweater on, and I'll show it to you. Okay, so I'm back. Um, this is my partially completed, so faded sweater, and uh, you can see I am 
currently attached. <laughs> Little puppet on the string here. And uh, yeah, it's really weird having like, <laughs> not having um, a sleeve. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you can see that there's some pulling happening here. But I think that's kind of um, the, uh, it's the, it's the thing now. It's like the trendy, uh, I don't want to say trendy. It's the um, popular thing right now is to have art yarns, to have indie dyed yarns, and they're like little works of art. You know, they're not, um, they're not, uh, it's not, um, it's not about buying um, five skeins of, four skeins of perfectly matching exact dye lot, um, you know, sweater that, that, that's one solid color anymore. I mean, of course, um, people, people are still doing that. And, um, I'm even doing that with, uh, with my, um, my grandpa cardigan, but, um, but you know what I mean? Like this is, um, it's fun and popular and, um, and, and awesome, I think. Um, to have indie dyed yarn and to have fun um, yarn that does cool things like pull and um, make fun patterns and, and be its own work of art. So, yay, I, I'm, I'm so glad that um, I, yeah, this is such a good thing that I'm doing this because um, I really, really, really loved this sweater. And, um, I remember knitting this on the beach. My husband and I went on vacation, um, the Outer Banks, North Carolina. It's one of our favorite places, um, to go. And, um, I'm, uh, I'm actually from North Carolina, <laughs> but, uh, but I've, uh, yeah, I've lived in Vermont for, um, oh, I think almost seven years now. And Vermont is, um, uh, is my home. And uh, my dad's from here, and I've been visiting since I was young, like uh, still when I was a kid, started coming to stay with my dad in Vermont. And um, I didn't love it so much when I was younger, but um, but Vermont's my home. I just thought I had to, I don't know, I had to say that. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I was knitting this while we were on vacation in North Carolina. And um, I love this sweater, and I can't wait to have it finished. Um, and I can't wait to wear it to ride back. That's going to be cool. All right. So now the question is, do I keep, do I keep wearing this and, um, and talk to you like this? <laughs> oh my gosh. Somebody's going to like skip ahead to the end and then just see me like this and be like, what? <laughs> okay. So, um, I think I'm going to go change. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, that's that's my so faded sweater, and yeah, next time you see me, hopefully it will be completed, and uh, yeah, maybe I'll have photos from Ryan Beck to show you that that'd be fun. Okay, so uh, next and the last thing that I'm going to talk about for knitting is my um, speckle and pop. So, um, the uh, the trip. Um, okay, so I didn't, I didn't finish Clue 1. Um, the trip, our trip to Montreal took some, uh, took a chunk out of some of that knitting, which I'm not complaining about, obviously. Um, but, uh, I'm just saying, like, it, it made it so that I had less time for knitting. And, uh, and, and getting my Etsy store running and, and doing all the dyeing and, and, just everything that goes with um, opening an Etsy store and running it, and um, it's just, uh, it's been a, a lot of work and um, a joy to do, but <laughs> adorable, but, um, but it's taking some time um, away from uh, my knitting time. And I also got a late start on it, so I don't know, I, I feel like I'm, beast I'm like... I'm just gabbing a lot today. Um, 
so I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, um, so this is my first color. It's, um, this is all my hand dyed yarn. This is all my own yarn. So this is Rebel Spring. This is uh, Shape Shifter. And I'm officially on the second color now because this, you can see, is not a, no longer attached. Thank goodness. <laughs> and um, so I'm on my second color, which is uh, Shape Shifter. And then my next color will, will be Woodland Nymph. And I have two skeins of this yarn available, and I'll talk about that later in my Etsy shop section. <laughs> um, and I'm not going to show off all the little pops of color. Um, you can check out the last video where I really went into detail and showed all of the yarn, if you would like. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and show you what I have done right now. It's just um, Clue 1, and uh, yeah, so this is what I have done. So down here is where I started, and I just um, recently um, finished. So you have the first main color, then you have like a fading section where you take and fade the first and the second color, and then now I'm just on the second color section of Clue 1. So this is what I have so far, and I think this is going to look really, really nice for the fall. Um, I have I have um, been avoiding looking at like people who, who are further along. Um, I know what this first section looks like, and I have an idea of what the second section looks like, but for, I'm still kind of in the dark for the overall, overall uh, look of the Speckle and Pop. Um, so this... This, it, um, I've decided that I've been kind of here, there, and everywhere with my knitting. Um, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and I'm just spreading myself too thin. And I feel like I'm not getting anything done. So I've decided that I'm making this sweater a priority, and I'm making my speckle and pop a priority. And I'm going to do my very, very best to catch up. Um, I did get a late start to this and um, I'll be honest with you I also had some trouble start when I started this because I think what happened was um, you know I would be knitting when I first started knitting this I would try to like knit late in the afternoon to the night and you know maybe I was tired and um, I don't know I had like foggy brain or something and I kept just making really s silly mistakes and um, so at one point I ended up ripping out a couple of rows I think you know maybe like a section of one of the pops and then like a section of uh, a main color and then just getting a clean slate and kind of start now I didn't rip the whole thing out because I'm not doing that um uh I cord again no <laughs> I wasn't going that far and I didn't need to um I just I don't know I had some little error and it, it was something really really silly that, that I had missed, you know, um, maybe like I didn't decrease or I didn't increase or what, whatever it was. It was something really small and it just kept like throwing me off. And so I decided that I wanted to, you know, I wanted this to look really nice. So I took the time to take it out and redo it. But since then I've been, I've been perfectly fine. Um, I haven't had any trouble. In fact, it's, it's gotten, um, to be really easy and I don't even need to look at the pattern anymore. Um, so yeah, I'll show you up close. You can see my pops of color. So I've got, the first color is this, I'm calling it violet. Um, they don't have names, I'm just kind of calling it violet, light blue, purple, red, dark blue, and then back to the violet. So that's my, um, my sort of pattern uh, for my colors. And so yeah, this is gradually going to get darker. So this is the lightest color, and it's gradually going to get darker. This is, oh yay, I finally get to move my um, progress keeper. So last time I showed it to you, that's where I was. Way, 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 way down there. Way down there. <laughs> um, 
So woohoo! Actually, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take it off right now. We're gonna move my little. It's um, he's a little fiery unicorn <laughs> that I made. And um, Hannah thinks she's the corner of craft, crafty chat. She um, she makes these and sells these. I used her tutorials to kind of figure out how to make little beaded progress keepers and I just made my own um but yeah if you like them you should go check her out because um I'm not making them to sell there's no way that's happening <laughs> plus it's it's her thing and I wouldn't do that um but uh they're really really cute there I moved them okay yeah and then this um I have this one special stitch marker kind of uh, marking um, I don't want to give the pattern away. I don't want to say what you're doing there. If you know how to make chevrons, you, you can probably figure that out, but I have it marking that. And then I just have these, um, little metal rings that actually you can use for making jewelry. I find these are really simple and easy and, um, they don't really get in the way and they're not too like bulky. Cause sometimes if you have like you know, four or five of, you know, bigger stitch markers like this, it just gets to be too much for me. It's just, it's too much going on. So I like how like simple these are. They're small. They don't get in the way. They're not distracting and they're not like weighing down the knitting. Um, so yeah, I like them for that. So yeah, I'm really happy about this. I, I just can't wait to get to section two. I, I don't know. I'm kind of feeling a little bit, um, um, kicking myself a little bit. Why is that? Why do I keep saying that? I, I feel like, um, I feel a little bit down that uh, I'm so behind, but, um, I have real reasons for it. You know, I've been busy. We went, um, away for our anniversary and, um, and I've had things going on. It's not like I've just been ignoring it. I've actually been like focusing on trying to get it done. It's just, um, it's just, yeah, I, I got a late start. So, <laughs> okay so that's yeah that's all I have for knitting so yeah I have some spinning things to talk about a little bit I'm not going to yeah I don't think I'm going to go too um into uh into the details because um, um I'm really yeah I'm really running on time here <laughs> but um I'm hosting a sock spackle with so Perfect Pearls, and uh, we are hosting a sock spin-along, knit-along, and that goes until December 1st. Um, so uh, we have some people, um, including Mando Bug, uh, myself, obviously, uh, Jade from So Perfect Pearls, and then some of, of other lovely ladies um, are spinning along with us. And uh, I'd say gentlemen, but there are no gentlemen spinning with us. Um, Anyway, so I just recently finished um, my yarn. So these are my two, um, well, I say skeins, but now they're cakes, um, that are all ready to go for sock knitting. And um, I haven't started them yet, and I'm not, I'm not going to. I don't need that kind of pressure right now. I have so much going on, I just can't. I can't. But um, after Rhinebeck, and then, um, I mean, it's, it goes until December 1st. So it's these... Um, I think I have a total of 234 um, uh, yards, something like that, with both of these. So I don't have a lot of yarn. Um, they're probably going to be shorter socks, but um, that's perfectly fine. There was no rules that they had to be um, tall socks. It just, you couldn't have baby socks, because I didn't want people making, like, a sock this big. Um, you know, that's that was the only rule. Um, well, one of the only rules. <laughs> uh, anyways, so, so yeah, that, uh, this is my finished yarn, and I think, as you can tell, like, I have the different colors going on the outside. I've, um, caked them so that they will not match, and I'm doing that intentionally because I know for a fact there's no way that these are going to match, um, which is perfectly fine. I didn't, um, expect them to uh, at all, so... Um, yeah, I'm intentionally going to have it so the colors, I think, will kind of, like, 
um, be offset. And, uh, and yeah, so these will be my first hand spun socks. Um, this will be my first time having um, knitting socks and having socks that I spun with my own yarn. Uh, or that I spun and then, yeah, knit with my own yarn. So that's, that's really exciting. One of these is definitely bigger. I think it's this one. Uh, this one had is um, has more yarn um, length than this one does, and uh, I definitely spun the first one. I think this might have been the first one more consistently than the second one. But um, by the second one, like I said, I think maybe you could tell I'm getting a little like overloaded. And I just feel like I've got so much going on and I have to do so many things and I have to get this done and I have to do that and I have to dye yarn and I have to label it and I have to knit and then I have to do this and then I have to spin. <laughs> so, <laughs> and nobody's putting pressure on me. Nobody, nobody but myself. But, um, <laughs> anyways. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to be waiting to, uh, to start knitting these probably after Rhinebeck and, um, and maybe even after I finish my monster socks, my little monster socks that, um, I'm not going to show, but I, um, I hand dyed some self-striping sock yarn. So yeah, that's it for my, my, um, well, that's not totally it for my spinning. I have one other little work in progress that I started spinning, um, that's relating, related to my shop update. So I'm going to save that for, um, shop update. But um, I'm not going to, yeah, I want to show you just a little bit of what I did for the fleece that I bought. So I bought a fleece at Vermont Sheep and Wool. It was my first fleece. And um, I kind of pulled it all apart and divided it into sections. So all I did was um, kind of picked out the different colors that I have. So I have the darkest color here in one bag. And then the next darkest color, and then the lightest colors. Um, and so I just kind of started, got started on that. Um, and then I cut. I bought this uh, like mesh material for really cheap. It was like a dollar a yard. And I bought this. Um, I cut out. I started cutting out a bunch of little squares. And I'm going to do something called the uh, burrito method, sausage method, the sausage method, where you, um, you wash fine wool and like a little, I'm going to call it a burrito. I think it's called a sausage, but burrito makes sense. Um, and then you use, use little um, uh, safety pins to, um, to secure the, uh, the fabric and then you wash it so it keeps everything together and it prevents, um, it just makes for, uh, makes, keeps your fiber nice and together so it doesn't get agitated or, um, yeah, it just makes it nicer. And then, um, of course, um, when you go to, you know, hand cart it or drum cart it or whatever, um, it, it will, um, it will, it'll be nicer for that process as well. So that, that method that I'm talking about, I found in the spinner's book of fleece in the fine wool section. So if you're interested, that is in this book. And, um, I think I have videos on that too, but I can't make this, this video can't be two hours long. Like I'm already, I'm already over an hour. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll just, I'll make it as long as it has to be. And then you guys can watch it in parts or not. I whatever. <laughs> I don't expect that anybody watches every second of my video, but I just, I, I, I know that people don't have a ton of time. So yeah, if you're interested in watching all of it, maybe just like watch it in sections. <laughs> um, okay. So, so that, that's the conclusion of spinning. So, oh yeah, I have, I think I forgot about talk about this in the, uh, in the Rhinebeck section. This is a uh, Mrs. Brown's Bags, and I've never shown this off or talked about it before. I bought it quite a while ago, and I've never used it. And the reason why is because I wanted to make some alterations to it. You see how it's kind of like 
sagging down a little bit. Um, that's because the, uh, the straps weren't sewn all the way up. And so, yeah, I, I think it's really, really pretty and I like it. I don't want to say anything bad about it, but, um, if I'm being perfectly honest, I'm just not happy that these straps don't go all the way to the top. And you know, that could just be a personal preference thing. Um, you could fold this in, um, and use it like that. But then you can't use the little, um, the cute little pink snap that's on there. So I was thinking what I might do, this might be a cute bag to have for, um, to carry around for Rhinebeck. And I could put, um, if I buy something, I could put it in here. I could put a project bag or something in here. Like maybe if I want to knit socks, if I'm waiting in line or something, um, yeah. So I thought about, um, maybe making some alterations to this bag. And with, with what time, but, um, I don't know, I'm probably crazy. Um, but yeah, I thought about like unpicking this and I know how to sew bags. So I know how to, um, adjust this if I want to. And I'd also think I, if I do it, I might try to add some, um, interfacing just to add a little bit of thickness to this. Um, but I thought I'd show it off because it is really, really beautiful. And I love this, um, the fabric is, uh, I believe she knits this and this looks like bulky yarn that she knit. And then she takes photos and has it made into fabric. It's really, really cool. I just haven't used it because of the strap issue. I just don't like that it, it does this. But that was just, that was just on top of my, um, my, uh, I have a tote here with all of my Etsy shop stuff. So, um, <laughs> so, so yeah, I just thought I'd talk about that. Um, okay. So, so I'm going to show you what I have in my Etsy shop right now. And, um, I think I'll just show you the fiber first. So I recorded before I started this video, I recorded a little video um, because I sold one of my, um, braids of fiber right before I started filming. So I'm going to insert that right now. So I'm, uh, in the middle of getting ready and, uh, for my next podcast and I just had an order come through and, um, I was going to share this on the podcast, but now I want to like get it packaged and sent off to this, uh, person who is super awesome. You know who you are. So, um, yeah, I li it literally just came in. I was about to like start podcasting. So yeah, I had to, um, stop what I was doing to film this so that I can get this off, um, to, uh, to the person who bought it. So, um, I dyed some fiber and, um, this is Hippogriff feathers and it was inspired by Buckbeak from Harry Potter and this is uh merino it's a little over four ounces and uh yeah it's no longer available because well I dyed two of them and I decided to keep one to spin and um and somebody just bought this one so yeah I thought I'd just pop in really quick and uh and show it to you because yeah, if it's, um, if, if other people are interested, um, I'll dye some more and, uh, and make it uh, a colorway. So, so yeah. Okay. I'm going to, um, hop off here and, uh, and get this in the mail. <laughs> okay. So now that you've seen that video, I wanted to show off the fiber and, um, and before I sent it off to uh, the uh, recipient, uh, I wanted to show it off and maybe um, see if other people like it and are interested in it and I'll dye some more. Um, oh, because I, uh, I kept one of the skeins to spin for myself. So hopefully you watched that video. And, um, and now uh, this is what I have so far. I, uh, I divided it into four to four so fourths and this is the um this is one of the, the the of those segments um that I spun up last night and I really love how it's spinning up it's it, I, I if you watch it it's called hippogriff feathers and um yeah it's just coming out so pretty I think 
you know, I was, um, yeah, I don't know. You know, you never know. You, you try to pick names that, um, well, actually, I didn't pick a name for, I didn't diet and then pick a name. I, I was watching the Harry Potter marathons. Who was it? And, um, and I uh, was inspired by Buckbeak. Uh, and, um, and so actually, yeah, this, this fiber was inspired by Buckbeak. And I, I named it Hippogriff Feathers, which I thought was really cute. But yeah, you never know. Um, I think, but I do think that this, um, this looks like, like that, you know? I think it's really beautiful. I love it. Blue and grays and um, there's a little bit of black in there. Um, it's really pretty. Okay, so on to, um, on to items that I have in my shop. So I also have a braid of, this is Hidden Huntress. And I also have yarn called Hidden Huntress. So this is um, Falkland. Is that upside down? <laughs> it's Falkland. It's wool top. Um, combed wool top. And uh, it's over 4 ounces. It's 4.25. Um, it could be slightly over. I was generous with the... Um, with the weight, so um, it's at least 4.25 ounces. It's non superwash, so it will felt. And yeah, that is um, Hidden Huntress, and there will be lots of photos that I took that are on my Etsy shop. That's Hidden Huntress. And then I have one of what's becoming one of my favorite colorways is Jade, which is inspired by So Perfect Pearls. And um, so I have this Falkland fiber, which is just like Hidden Huntress. Um, it's also 4.25 ounces and um, also non superwash, will felt. Um, but this is also inspired by Jade of So Perfect Pearls because um, she loves purple like I do. But the, um, the green and the gray are colors that she loves. And um, I know that she likes this colorway because she bought one of them. <laughs> I'm, okay, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that. I hope it's okay that I said that. <laughs> um, but I asked her if it was okay that I that I named this after her, and she said um, it was. So um, hopefully, yeah, hope I, I'm sure. Um, yeah, hopefully she she's okay with it because she she said she was. Um, but I was inspired by her, and I think this um, this colorway is so pretty, and I love it. Okay, so those are the only uh, fibers that I have available right this second. Um, I'd like to dye some more, but I'm probably going to wait until I sell one or two more before I dye some more fiber. So, um, let's see. So, I'm going to show you some new stuff. Um, I have a lot of new stuff. <laughs> okay, so, oh my gosh, all of this stuff. Okay. <laughs> So, I've been busy trying to stock my Etsy shop, and um, I have some fun things for you. So, since I just showed Jade, I thought I'd show you I have um, two 50-gram skeins of Jade on a two-ply sparkle sock weight yarn. And uh, these are really beautiful purple, gray, and green speckled um, sparkly yarns. They, they're sold separately. You could buy both of them and knit them um, two at a time, do like two at a time socks or uh, whatever you want to do, but um, whatever you'd like to knit with them. But um, they're sold separately, so if you just want to buy one, you can, or you could buy both. But that's Jade. And, um, and then I have also on, um, also two 50 gram skeins. I'll be inserting photos too, so, um, because this is so dark. I have um, some nice photos of this. This is called Brown Eyed Girl, and you can kind of see it there. Brown Eyed Girl, and I don't know what what reason I would name something like that. <laughs> I love I love that song. Of course, I am a brown eyed girl, um, and uh, and yeah, I love brown eyes. And um, this is uh, mostly an overall purple color. But it has blue and brown and um, sort of pink and red and and lots of beautiful, beautiful shades in there. Um, I love this. It's a lovely dark 
kind of um, plummy, eggplanty um, purple, and it's gorgeous. I love it. Definitely one of my favorite colors. Um, okay, so I also have, I'm just going to keep going with the 50 gram um, skeins. So I have Christmas Eve. And I dyed these, of course, for Christmas, um, which will be here before you know it. Um, these are mostly um, a dark green, but there's red and blue and sort of a goldeny um, yellow orange. They remind me. What it reminds me of is um, Christmas lights. So it's a it's a darker green. And it looks like it has like sort of pops of like Christmas lights. That's what it looks like to me. So it reminded me of Christmas Eve. And I thought this might be fun if you're interested in um, maybe you want to do two at a time socks. You could get both of these. And um, I know that Stranded um, Amy Edwards Green, she has a podcast and she is the owner of um, Stranded Dye Works. She's hosting a festive sock along, so these would be perfect for that if you're interested. They, um, yeah, they're in my Etsy shop, and you could get a jump start on your Christmas knitting. So, um, and I'm sorry if you don't um, celebrate Christmas. Um, I do, uh, and I know millions of other people do. Um, you know, maybe I will have some non-Christmas holiday themed uh, things later, but, um, but yeah, right now that's just, that's all I have for, um, holiday, um, like winter themed holiday stuff. So, um, I also have one, um, skein of self-striping yarn. This is free falling. And this is, um, this is, the name comes from the Tom Petty song and, um, Tom Petty died. I'm sure you probably heard that. I mean, unless you don't know who he is. Um, but I grew up listening to classic rock. You know, my mom was like rock and roll, 80s, and, and Pat Benatar, and, and all of that stuff. And my dad was like country. <laughs> and um, so anyway, I listened to a little bit of everything. But I listened to Tom Petty growing up. And uh, Free Falling was always one of my favorite songs. So I named this after that song. And uh, it's a six color repeat, mini stripes. Um, there's photos up on my Etsy store and I'll insert some photos here. Um, but I'll just tell you a funny little joke. When I was little, like really, really little, I, I distinctly remember, vividly, vividly remember singing, um, I'm free foreign. <laughs> Not free falling, free foreign. And I'm pretty sure I sang it that way for years before I knew that it was free fallen. <laughs> so yeah, it's the song free fallen. And, uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I sang free foreign for years. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. And then I have my, um, sort of, uh, um, pumpkin -y, um, inspired yarns. So, okay. Yeah. So I have two more 50 grams gains. This is um, October Wedding, and it was inspired by my own wedding. So obviously I talked about, um, we just celebrated four years of marriage, and I talked a little bit about my pumpkin wedding cake, um, and uh, my just general love for pumpkin and pumpkins. And uh, and I love growing pumpkins, it's just all the pumpkin things. There's pumpkins in the background. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this is called um, October Wedding. And uh, it's just a beautiful orange and cream colored um, yarn. And I have two on the 50 gram sparkle skeins. And then I have one really exciting on bulky. So I have, um, I now have bulky yarn. <laughs> and I, I just have two available right now. One is October Wedding. And this one is Pumpkin pumpkin picking. <laughs> so this one is orange and green. And this is the same as the 50 gram minis. This is just um, orange and cream. <laughs> so 
So these might make great hats um, or anything else you would use bulky yarn for. Um, so maybe knit a fall hat. Uh, yeah, so these are available in my Etsy shop. And um, I'll just show you a couple of things that I have. Um, I also have um, Raven's Revenge, which I showed off last, last time. And um, this was inspired, the name comes from um, uh, Raven from um, X-Men. She's uh, AKA Mystique. And it's beautiful blue and pinks and reds and lots of beautiful, beautiful colors in there. And it kind of reminds me of like, like bright comic book colors. I really, I think this is a beautiful yarn. And then I have two skeins of Hidden Huntress. So this is, these are beautiful um, cranberry to burgundy skeins. Um, this is Hidden Huntress 1. This is Hidden Huntress 2. And these beauties are still available in my Etsy shop. And then I have Woodland Nymph, which I think is at the bottom of the pile. Oh, I got buried. Okay, there it is. And then I have Wooden Nymph, which, uh, Wooden, <laughs> Woodland, Woodland Nymph, which is, um, which is the third main color in my, there you go, which is the third main color in my, um, Speckle and Pop. So there are two of these available if you're interested. They are beautiful, um, dark beauties with lots of different colors in them. And, um. Yeah, I think these are beautiful for fall and into winter. And yeah, if you're interested, you can go check them out. And that's it. That's it for my Etsy shop, I think. I think I got everything. And uh, that's it for this video. Um, I think I covered everything. So um, thank you for watching. And uh, don't forget, I think I'll, I'll have various videos inserted at the end here. Maybe some like cute animals from the biodome and things like that if you want to stick around and watch that. So um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Where's that thing still in? That's a good one. There's one right there, yeah.